Okay, um, this is our, our last uh, system that we cover in here on this unit, and it is the nervous system. Uh, now, part of this is also looking at the organs that are connected or tied in um, with the nervous system. So we'll look at the sense organs as well. But to start with, we mentioned that the nervous system is the most complex system we have because it has the brain in it, the most complex organ um, that exists. Um, now, we can divide the nervous system up into that part, which is the brain, which uh, is going to be kind of our integration organ where um, thoughts and signals are come in and are uh, deciphered and, and information is sent out. So that's kind of our integration center is um, going to be that. And that's called the central nervous system. It includes the brain and the spinal cord. And then the other part of the nervous system is going to be what's called the peripheral nervous system are the PNS and the CNS. The PNS, or peripheral nervous system, includes our sensory input. That's going to be the information we get from our body that's going to the brain. That would be our eyes or ears, our nerve endings in our skin, and things like that. And then, um, uh, and then our motor output. This would be the information that's coming from our brain uh, to send messages throughout our body. So again, a very complex system. We understand uh, a lot about it, but there's still a lot that is very complex, and um, so we're still learning. All right, so two uh, parts of the system. The system is made up uh, all of one type of cell. We mentioned this at the beginning of this unit. This type of cell is called a neuron. Neurons are cells like any other cell with a cell body, but they have these extensions that come off them that make them unique. These extensions are where signals are going to be relayed. So we have some, sig some uh, extensions that are short. These are called dendrites, and some that are long. These are called axons. Axons are surrounded or wrapped with these other individual cells. And... Um, this is produces a pathway. These are called Schwann cells, and this is a pathway that helps speed up the signal and um, and and allows that signal to um, to move quicker. Um, it's a signal or impulse or you know. There's different ways of trying to describe it. Um, you know, it's like putting a thought under a microscope. You can't really do that, but we can measure these kind of impulses or signals, we can measure it in kind of electrical activity when things are, are active uh, electrically. And um, so that is um, the, the path that they take. Uh, the, it goes through these extensions of dendrites and axons. Um, now, when we look at the systems themselves, there's, um, we'll start again with invertebrates and look at very simple systems and get to more complex system. Uh, there are some systems that have no integration center. There is no brain. Uh, and um, so this is some invertebrates like the hydra that we've talked about a few times. A simple invertebrate animal has a nervous system, and uh, but it does not have a brain or some kind of ganglia that uh, is going to integrate the, any information. It's just a scattering of neurons throughout the body. So it picks up sensory information from tentacles and passes them through the body parts to other tentacles, but no integration of that information, a web-like system. And that's called a nerve net. Nerve net is what that's referred to. But even in other invertebrates and up into more complex animals, we have um, a different type of system, usually referred to as a bilateral nervous system. Bilateral means there's a right and left side to it. Coincidentally, the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. The right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. And then there's um, nerves that, are, that move throughout the body. All right, that's um, usually we'll have some kind of cephalization where there is a concentration of nervous structures at one end of the body, the head. So you have a kind of a head region where, you know, in the humans, we have our eyes, our ears, our, our nose, nerve, um, our brain, all of that's kind of located at one region. So that's uh, sometimes referred to as cephalization. All right, so that is uh, the more complex type of system. 
uh, let's see. We will mention that in the um, in the nervous system, there's some voluntary um, action of the nervous system and some involuntary of the peripheral system that, that goes out from the brain. And some of these are and sometimes it's referred to as somatic and autonomic. So the autonomic would be the things that are, are um, helped uh, by the nervous system that um, are done um, uh, they are they are regular regulated uh, kind of through the internal environment, and um, so we have sonomic and autonomic nervous systems. Um, basically, whether these are voluntary or involuntary, like our examples here of moving our body parts, we're thinking about moving our body parts and we do it. So. Uh, in here, the um, um, the heart rate, the, our pancreas releasing insulin, and movement of food through our digestive tract, all those are kind of involuntary actions. Uh, our nervous system helps to coordinate those. Okay, so we have the two systems uh, and um, or the two parts of the system, and the the brain I mentioned is the most complex organ there is. So what we do in our outline here is we kind of list out the major parts of the uh, human brain, and we go through some of those parts, kind of just mentioning their their major function and what they're responsible for, because these different sections of the brain are responsible for different things. Now this chart out of your book kind of shows the development of the brain through that embryonic development we talked about in the last chapter. So in this is an embryo, one month old here. We already see this, uh, the brain matter forming here. We see a, um, what is a distinct um, section, the front, middle, and back of the brain, forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. These later developed into more distinct structures of that front, middle, and, and um, rear brain, and that's what these structures are listed here. Uh, and um, so we list out these structures, uh, like we have the medulla that consists of nerve tracts um, with different parts of the brain, the cerebellum con coordinates muscle activity. The pons right here is a large structure on the back of the brain. Um, it's uh, involved in controlling breathing. The thalamus is um, a, a relay center for a lot of um, different messages. Uh, let's see, hypothalamus is a section in the brain that coordinates those uh, internal organs that we talked about. So uh, all of these are structures that develop on the brain as it, uh, as it matures. So here we see a figure of a um, adult human brain and we can see those uh, structures pointed out and where they originated from or, or what section. So we still have a distinct kind of fore, mid and hind brain here. There's, uh, there's the pons and the uh, hypothalamus and thalamus there. All right, and uh, here's a figure out of your book, kind of like what we list out there in the outline of the the structures of the brain and those and the major functions that they're involved in. As I mentioned, the brain, the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body, the right side that controls the left side of the body. Now, those structures of the brain are, are one way of kind of grouping the brain up, but another way is um, by dividing the large part of the brain uh, called the cerebrum into lobes. And uh, so the lobes uh, are uh, different parts of the, uh, the large, uh, sometimes referred to as the gray matter of the brain. And um, this is, uh, again, the cerebrum. All right, so in this, we have, um, uh, biologists have grouped this into kind of four lobes or four areas of the brain. We have our frontal lobe, kind of the front part of our brain, uh, the temporal lobe, the periental, and then the, uh, the visual association is the occipital. And these are all um, associated with different things that the brain are responsible for, like we have speech and taste and in the periental here, also have some speech associated here. Now we know that these parts of the brain are associated with these specific things because they, um, uh, they're they more active. You can measure, again, that electrical activity that's taking place there when these types of things are going. 
Uh, we also know if you have damage to that area of the brain, like a stroke, you don't get the oxygen that needed for those cells, and and those uh, specific cells die out, and you have a you have a stroke, then you have um, you can be disabled in certain areas like speech or um, hearing and, and, and vision and these type things with that area of the brain. Uh, again, you can measure that stuff with an EEG, which measures brain activity. And uh, one last thing to mention about the brain is there, of course, we have to have this input and information coming in there. This major um, stream of information is called the reticular formation or the reticular activating system. This is basically just uh, the line of information that's keeping us conscious, uh, keeping our brain alive, basically. All right, so the next thing we talk about are some specific organs that are used to um, um, pick up information to send to those brains. So we have these sense organs. Now, different animals have different types of, of uh, sensory organs. Um, we have, uh, and there's a lot of similarity along the animal kingdom, and then there's some animals that have some unique types of sense organs, like echolocation we see in whales, um, electroreceptors that we see in certain animals for migration, uh, magnetoreceptors picking up the magnetic field. Um, these bats are, are using a type of sonar um, uh, type of sense mechanism to pick up their prey. So animals use these sense mechanisms for a lot of things. They use it for predation to help them get food to migrate, uh, to move from one area to another and other types of behavior. So here out of your book, it shows this grizzly bear is using his senses to catch this salmon, which is using its senses to try to migrate upstream. And um, so senses are used in nature for a lot of different reasons, but we can group these senses into some different categories based on where these receptors are. The first uh, grouping that we mentioned well, the first group that we mentioned is based on what type of energy they're responding to. We can look at the human skin to see some of these categories. First one in with outline we mentioned is mechanoreceptors. Mechanoreceptors respond to mechanical energy is what that's referring to. So that's like touch or stretching or gravity. So when we touch a table, we feel that because in our skin, we have certain types of mechanoreceptors and that's these that are responding to touch. Some are at the very edge of our skin and they can respond to light touch, others further down. Another type of receptor is called a chemoreceptors is the next one we list in the outline and these are going to respond to chemical energies like this moth here can respond to pheromones released by the opposite sex there and those are um, um, chemical energy uh, taste and smell photoreceptors are those that um, pick up light and uh, so we have those in our eyes there's different types of rods and cones that that we have for picking up light intensity so we have uh, compound eyes and in insects and sen uh, single lens eyes and squid and, and we have single lens eyes so those are called photoreceptors so, uh, and then the next is thermoreceptors responding to hot or cold. We have that in our skin. We can feel things that are hot and cold. Uh, electroreceptors are those that are picking up electrical energy. So we have animals that can pick up like infrared receptors like this uh, viper snake here to catch its prey. So we have all those types of receptors for picking up uh, cold and touch and um um, temperature, things like that. They're all different. So we don't have just one receptor that picks up all these different types of inputs, uh, but we have these different receptors that gather this information and send it to our brain. Okay, the next thing we want to mention is that you can also group these based on where they're found. Now, the inside of our body, we refer to those as proprioceptors. Outside of our body that we're picking up information outside of us are called exteroreceptors. So that's another category uh, basing it uh, uh, purely on where that information is coming from. Okay, we're going to stop right here. We have two more things to kind of talk about. We're going to continue this podcast in um, in our next to uh, to look at the, some of the major structures like the eyes and the ears uh, that pick up this information.